Please welcome Alexis Marie Shute. Now, Alexis, before we get to your latest book, I'd like to ask you about your memoir, Expecting Sunshine, and why you wrote it. Yeah, so I wrote Expecting Sunshine after an unexpected tragedy in my family. So I had uh, one healthy child, and I was pregnant with my next baby, and we received the unfortunate news that um, my son was going to die before he was even born. And as a human being, as a mother, a woman, you don't prepare for that kind of news. And I really felt like in many ways I lost myself. And it wasn't until I got pregnant again with my next child, uh, who actually just turned seven, um, that I really, I really realized I had to approach my grief and face it head on, otherwise I would carry it forever. And so that's when I started writing Expecting Sunshine, and it became um, a tribute to my son Zachary who passed away. It became an homage to so many mothers who are silent through loss, and yet they have this tremendous amount of love for every one of their children that they've ever carried. And it also became uh, a saga of healing and how we can intentionally do that and, and find joy after um, immense heartache. I'm betting a lot of people reached out to you after that book. It's incredible. It's incredible and humbling um, because I know that so many people after that experience feel tremendously alone. Maybe after grief of any kind, we feel we have to carry it ourselves, but we don't have to. And that's part of the beauty of the revelation of the journey is that we walk uh, alone together and we don't have to carry these things on our own shoulders. Now you made it into a documentary as well. What, what, why did you do that? Well, I'm a visual artist as well. So for me, I, I really picture um, and visualize everything that I write about. And I know that there's some people who are not like us here in the room that are like, give me books, right? <laughs> for me, I'm like, my mom's like, I thought you're working and I am updating my Goodreads account in the middle of the day. <laughs> She's like giving me up, you know, crap about that. But there's some people that really resonate with the visual uh, medium better. And so I really want to tr create something that could reach out to men and families. It's something that even a lot of children have watched and, and learned about the experience that their family have gone through. And it's also an art, an art piece. It's something that creates something visual and beautiful about um, a heartbreaking but heartwarming uh, experience. So you went on to uh, write the Eighth Island Trilogy. Above the Star and Below the Moon are now out. So how did this series start? Tell us a little bit about it. Well, so that baby um, that I had after my loss, I really, I, I had him on my nursing pillow while I wrote, and I just really wanted to get out of the sad head state and into something that was adventurous and escapism and a different magical world. And so I started writing during NaNoWriMo, which stands for National Novel Writing Month, which is actually every November. So people right now are probably sweating at their computers, like haven't showered in a week and typing away. Um, so that's what I, what I did. I sat down with my baby on my lap and I started writing and I just, I really came about with a story through st stream of consciousness really. Um, and then it evolved from there. So it's young adult fiction. Was that intentional or did it just work out that way? Gosh, I think it's, I think it's, young person, middle person, old person, every age of person. Um, there's three main characters, grumpy senior citizen, Grandpa Archie, his daughter-in-law Tessa, who might be sort of my age, and her 14-year-old daughter Ella. And I've had so many different readers, depending on their ages, say, well, Ella's the main character, or Archie's the main character. Everybody relates to who they're closest to um, in age or demographic, whatever. So it's kind of fun. It's a, it's a book that you could read you know, with your grandchild or, you know, a parent reading with their um, kid of any age. It's kind of fun, yeah. So the trilogy is finished, the final one not out yet. Um, so what was it like ending that story? It was incredible. It was, I think I cried. I had my little, like, moment alone where <laughs> I teared up. But I think it was, it, it's such a, a dream for so many people to write a book. And it's always been something I've wanted to do, but until I did it, I didn't know I could do it. So I really love um, those little moments where we can be like, oh, our dreams are possible. And I think that comes into play with the book as well. The heroes are, they're unlikely heroes on a mission that seems uh, insurmountable. 
and yet their bravery, um, their love for each other uh, overcomes all these obstacles. So yeah, that's kind of something that really resonates with me. And you work images into your books. I guess that's being an artist. You just want to express that as you go? Yeah, absolutely. So Ella, who's 14, she has cancer and can't talk. And she gets captured by a magical race of creatures and they give her a sketchbook. So at the end of every chapter from Ella's perspective in the book, we get to see and experience what she's experiencing through her sketches. And they're kind of whimsical, um, sort of fun ink illustrations. Well, it's uh, you got this coming, is the final one coming out or the middle one's coming out? Where, where are you saying? So Below the Moon just came out in October. So. That was like whew, a big push. And then we have uh, Inside the Sun, which is book three, coming out in April. So I'm exhausted. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Well, we want to thank you for coming in and joining us tonight. We appreciate it. And best of luck with those books. Thank you.